Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Cooking with Your Librarian. A few days ago on social media, I was able to hear the sentiments of parents and teachers as they learned that we'd be homeschooling for the rest of the academic school year. And of course, some are embracing this idea better than others, but I'm here today to tell you that we librarians are here to help you. Now we have more programming than ever for kids of all ages and of course for adults too. So with that said, my theme for this week is looking at the bright side, practicing gratitude, looking at your blessings, thanking your lucky stars, making lemons out of lemonade, or whatever idiom, meme, or expression you favor. I believe in the power of positivity, even in the face of tragedy and the heaviness that we are all feeling right now. Um, so let's, with that in mind, manifest some good fortune. And how can we do that? Well, we can do that with fortune cookies and fortune tellers. So this week, that's what we're going to work on. Come on in to my kitchen. The first thing you're going to do is start with a square of paper. Now to get to a square of paper, you can either use just regular copy paper, or if you don't have an excess of that, you can use any kind of paper. I have old notebooks for my kids. When school, the school year's over, you have this extra paper. You can use this paper. You can rip a sheet out of here and trim the edge, or sheet out of here, trim the edge. So this off. This one's nice because it's got the perforated edge. But if it didn't have the perforated edge, I could just trim it away. You see, you have a rectangle still, so we need to make this a square. So the easiest way to do that is to fold the paper to make a triangle. And that'll get you your square. You see, I just folded that down to make a triangle. And then this extra piece, I'm just going to fold it back. And then you're left with this little flap. We got to get rid of that. You can either just tear it off. I also have this little this little cutter guy I'm going to use. Handy dandy cutter. to the side. So now we have our square. I'm going to fold that triangle again. And then I'm going to make fold that triangle in half. <clears throat> so then you're left with this. Open that up. And you're going to take each of the four points and fold them in so they're touching the center point. start with the two opposing points looks like that and then fold in the other two now when you're doing this you're going to be careful because you don't want there to be like overlapping here because that will affect the um, maneuvering of the fortune teller when you're ready to play with it okay so I folded those four in 
Now I'm going to flip this down on the table so that the smooth side with no folds is showing. And I'm going to fold the corners again into the center, just like I did the first time, but kind of like backwards. And um, I've probably made thousands of these over the years, so I'm pretty good at it. Um, it you know, it takes some finagling. All right, so then you're left with that. So here's this side with the four squares, if you can see that, and then here's the side with the triangles. I'm going to just fold that in half to make like a little sandwich. And then this is the tricky part where you're going to pop it open. you got to kind of work it. It's actually easier with the um, copy paper. Uh, copy paper I think is a little thicker and it's uh, bigger. It's easier. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to show you one more time with the copy paper because that really works better if you're able to use that. So, we make our triangle, fold it corner to corner, fold it again, corner to corner. So, you know, you can use these. I'm showing you how to make this, but then I'm going to talk to you some more about how, how to use these as... Um, a source of fun for kids and also is a really great learning tool. Um, teachers and parents, you can use this to teach things to kids. Okay, now this isn't as perfect here, but hopefully it'll still work. Um, so when I was a school librarian, I used to use this to teach um, literary genres. It's a lesson I did with third graders. And uh, most of the third graders could handle the folding well. Uh, a few of them struggled a little bit, um, you know, due to um, you know a, a bit of a delay in the fine motor skill. But um, I've also had students in fourth grade who had trouble with this. So um, you know, some students may have, some children may have trouble, but you can help them. All right, so that one's made up. Um, but you can use this when you write things down. You know, when we were kids and we made these, we put things like, um, you know, you'd open it up and it'd say you're a stinky face and stuff like that. <laughs> but you can use this as a, as a memorization tool. I'll see, that one was a little bit crooked, so now this is giving me trouble opening it. But if you really work it, you can get it eventually. All right, there you go. It's done. It opens up like a mouth that way and that way and that way. So I'm going to show you the one I made when I used to do the literary genres, I had the students write colors on the four squares. You can write anything you want on those four squares. It could be colors, numbers, whatever. And then on the inside, they wrote down uh, literary genres, play, fiction, historical fiction, realistic fiction, mystery, fantasy, etc., etc. And then when you open the flap, you write the definition on the inside. That's how I did it for this particular thing. Now, sometimes it's easier when you open your blank fortune teller to take a ruler and make little guidelines so that they know where they are writing their definitions. Just make an X through there. And then a plus. And that will give you the guidelines for where to write your definition to correspond with the flap. So, see that? So you write whatever your thing is here you wanna learn, and then when you lift the flap, there is the corresponding definition, answer, fact, whatever you wanna put there. So, um, like I said, I used it for literary genres. Um, you can use it for anything. You can use this for math, learning languages, vocabulary words, really anything at all. So. Once it's done, just have the child pick a color. Blue, B-L-U-E. So you're learning to spell these things, right? Let's pick a genre. We're going to pick fiction, F-I-C-T-I-O-N. We're going to pick another one, poetry, P-O-E-T-R-Y. So you can do this forever, however many times you want to do it. And then you're going to pick one, and I'm going to pick mystery. What is mystery? Oh, I can't remember. Let me take a look. Made a puzzle or crime to solve. Suspenseful. 
So, anyway, that's how you do that. Honestly, you could keep elementary children busy for days using these, making these. So, um, you know, great tool to keep you busy when you need a break. Um, I found when I made these in school, in, in schools, I would get calls from teachers. They were upset because the kids kept pulling them out and playing with them when it wasn't library time. But, um, you know, you're home and you have uh, time to do things and this would be a good break. So let me know how you use it. I'll put some details in the comments um, how you use these either for your children or for your students. Teachers, feel free to share this video with your, uh, with your students to get them to do this fun thing. At the very beginning of the recipe, the first thing I'm gonna do is separate the egg whites from the egg yolks because this recipe only calls for egg whites. So this is how it's done. I already did a couple, I'm gonna show you how to do it. <clears throat> Take your egg. This is the way I do it, crack it on the counter. And then over the smaller bowl, I'm gonna just carefully crack that open, being careful not to let the yolk escape. And then you're gonna flip it back and forth kind of drop all the white part out that's good enough and then we're gonna save that yolk for later there are, there are things you can do with egg yolks I'll tell you about that later there's our fourth egg I'm gonna crack it carefully break it in half la, 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 la. okay don't get too crazy because uh, you don't want to break the yolk and that's pretty good. Drop the yolk in there, save that for later. And now we have our four egg whites. Once I have the egg whites separated and ready, I'm gonna combine the dry ingredients, which is your one cup of sugar and one cup of flour. And as I mentioned, I'm making this with gluten-free flour this time. I've had some requests for gluten-free recipes. I'm a, really a big gluten-free baker, actually. Um, so I'm just going to stir that <clears throat> to combine it. Okay, then I'm going to put that to the side for a moment. And then we're going to switch over to our four egg whites. And I'm going to whisk those with a whisk just to mix them up. And I'm going to do that for... Um, minute or two. Okay, so I stirred those up till they're just a little bit foamy, just for a couple minutes. They don't have to be, we're not whipping them up till they're stiff peaks or anything like that. Okay, move those over, get back to your flour mixture. And now we're going to add a quarter cup of oil. I use canola oil. You want to use something that doesn't have a strong flavor. Unless you want that flavor to be tasted in your cookies, then go for it. And I have a teaspoon of vanilla and a quarter teaspoon of almond. I'm going to mix that. So then I'm going to start to stir this up. And um, I, I want it to get to a texture that's kind of like wet sand. And if you look at this right now, there's a lot of dry areas. So that's why I had a little bit of extra water. I'm going to drop in like, I don't know, a tablespoon at a time till I get the texture I want. Looks like I'm going to need a whole about a quarter cup of water. That looks good.
Okay. I added probably about a third of a cup of water. And now it's at the place where I feel like it looks more like wet sand. Let's see if I can show that to you. Um, see, it kind of looks like wet sand. It's all incorporated. Okay, now at this point, we're going to give our egg whites another little whip. You know what? <clears throat> I forgot the salt. Ah. I'm going to give it just um, like a pinch of salt. Just a little sprinkle, not a lot. Stir that in. Okay, now we're going to add the egg whites. I'm just going to pour in maybe half of that. Get it mixed in. And now it's going to get squishier and squishier, more liquefied. All right, I'm going to bring the rest of this egg whites. I'm just going to stir that till it's combined. Now, um, I use gluten-free flour for this recipe. You could probably substitute regular flour in equal amounts. Um, the gluten-free flour I used has a mixture of flours, plus it has like a xanthan gum or something like that to give it uh, the elasticity that's missing from gluten-free flours. So um, you'll have to experiment. I can't tell you exactly what will happen with the different flowers you may want to experiment with. This is looking really good. So now it sort of looks like sort of like pancake flour a little bit, that kind of texture. And I think it's ready. So I'm going to show you how to do this with um, this is a quart size Ziploc bag, assuming that. Now I don't want you to run out and buy a pastry bag if you don't have that handy, if that's the only thing holding you back. So I'm just going to cut a little tiny bit off of the corner. I'm going to throw that out because we want that little piece of plastic to end up in our cookies. Okay, so let's see what that hole looks like. Eh, I think that's a good size. Okay. Put this in here figure out the easiest way to do this. I'm just going to hold the bag and pour this in and hope I don't make a big fat mess. Ah. Ooh. Okay, I don't have all of it in there, but that's okay. I'll go back later into that. Okay, there it is. Zip that up. Okay, so we're going to put this down for a moment because we have to spray this pan. Pan with a little spray. Not a ton, just enough to kind of coat the bottom. And we're going to get our bag and then we're going to squeeze little puddles. And we're only going to do four at a time because um, you need to fold these while they're hot and you really can only do about four at a time unless you're working with people. Put a little more in there. Okay, so of course, you don't even need to use this bag. You can just drop it by spoonfuls, but I really feel like when it comes out of the bag, it just makes a better circle. Then I'm going to get a spatula and just spread this out like this. Make little circles. Try to make it even. And it's going to be a little weird because of the cooking spray. It sort of slides around. But that's okay. There we go. Okay, you can do that for each one. Okay, so what's important here is to 
make them pretty level to make them as thin as you can without there being bare spots. I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven. I set my oven to 375 and I'm going to cook them for about 10 minutes and see how they look. Okay, I just pulled them out of the oven. Now we have to hustle because this is a quick procedure. So I'm going to take each of these with this spatula, flip them over quickly because we don't have a lot of time. And then I'm going to pick it up. First, I'm going to put my fortune in there. I'm going to fold it in half. Ow! And you kind of burn your hands. Then you're going to take a cup and you're going to just go like this. And there it is. It's formed and then you're going to drop it into the into the little um, muffin tin. Okay? So drop in your fortune, fold it in half on the cup, give it a fold. See, already they're cracking because there is no time to talk when you're doing this. Ow! And you burn your fingers a little bit. Do the bend. See, the bend worked on that one. Ouch, ouch. But you got to do this really quickly. Even this one looks like it's going to crack. So, there. Okay. Did it. Ouch. A little burned. So, there they are. They sort of look like fortune cookies, don't they? Now, before you say, wow, that was so cool she did that, um, this is the first time I've ever made fortune cookies, and let me show you what the first batch turned out to look like. Here's my first one. There's that one, and there's that one. Uh, that wasn't such a success. That was using parchment paper. <laughs> it's falling apart. I didn't like the parchment paper. Then this was my second batch. Look a little more like fortune cookies, but didn't quite have the fold technique down. And then third time's a charm. Those look like fortune cookies, don't they? And then these were the ones I just showed you. And the time it took me to set up my um, camera and to talk to you, that was wasted time that made the cookies crack and not come out as perfectly. But when I was able to attend to this and not mess around with my video camera, they came out perfectly. So um, there you go. If you're really focused, you can do it. Um, I will say these are hot. When you're doing it, it's very hot. You maybe could wear gloves, like Playtex living gloves or something like that. I would not recommend doing this with young children. They will get burned. It's probably not a great idea. So this is, uh, you know, something for older, older kiddos. So there you go. Fortune cookies. Those who check their sources are informed with the truth. Ooh, this looks good. Mm. You will find whatever you need to know <laughs> at your library. Good to know. If you can read this, Thank a teacher and your librarian. <clears throat> Someday soon, you will be able to step back inside your library, but for now, you can visit virtually. All we really need is love and a good book. Need information? Call your Buffalo and Erie County Public Librarian at 716-858-8900.